Afternoon everyone, welcome back to PBTV, I'm Stuart and today we've brought out a very special toy. They're, these are really good uh, entry level but they have some incredibly cool tricks up their sleeve if you're just getting into the sport. Uh, this is a little bit of a step up from your standard um, version 2 gearbox inside here. So if you've got any questions on the Double Eagle platform, by all means drop it down below uh, and we will... Um, throw your question up and make sure it gets answered as soon as possible. Uh, so as normal, we'll start at the front and work our way back. Uh, this thing does have a standard 40mm counterclockwise thread on the front of it, uh, so you can fit any of your um, trace unit suppressors, anything like that, uh, throw them on the front, no problem at all. So you could put the um, Spitfire on here, trace unit, flash unit, anything like that, and it would work perfectly fine. Coming back to the rail, M-lock on the left, right and bottom, so you can fit your torches, grips, lasers, anything like that, absolutely spot on. Um, onto the top, so standard 20mm rail on the top as well for your um, pec boxes, optics or all like that. It does come with the flip-up sights, these are um, just indented, there's no button or anything to press like that, they just flip up into place and flip down, you don't need to press anything. Uh, coming back to the receiver, the receiver is plastic on this or polymer, so um, if it does, if you do drop it or bump it or scratch or anything like that, it's going to bounce. It's not going to bend or anything. Uh, Sam on YouTube, how long is the barrel? Uh, I presume he means the uh, inner barrel. So um, the rail is about six inches. The uh, Tight bar in a barrel in this is about 230 mil, so this thing is uh, pretty decent out to a, a good range, has a good accuracy, uh, and even at its rate of fire, it's going to keep a nice tight grouping. Uh, so the receiver, I did say it is uh, polymer, and you will notice that it does have some cutouts and um, slight differences that you'll see in a normal V2 style uh, M4 receiver. That's because this is just the M904E variant. There are other variants that have collapsing stocks, uh, PDW stocks, so they've had to fashion the uh, receiver to be able to accept all of that. So these little cutouts that you see here, after if you have the skeleton stock, they slide down uh, and sit neatly inside the receiver. It is semi ambidextrous, so the fire control is on both sides. Uh, I will come to what that is capable to in a minute because that's got some uh, cool little bits behind it. But as standard, safe, semi, and full auto. Uh, it has got a um, sort of a nice enlarged uh, mag release, so it is indexed and it is quite nice and neat to get uh, on it. And that releases the 300 round uh, high cap. Standard Stanag style uh, metal uh, magazine holds 300 BBs and it is good to go. Charging handle, pull it back, find your rotary hop, which is always very, very good. Uh, what battery goes into the stock? Uh, so, yes, uh, battery is, is rear wired on this, so you do have a crane stock style battery here. Uh, stock, sorry, but this is uh, where your battery goes as well. Speaking of the battery, these are wired to Dean's because they've got some, um, they've got a MOSFET, they've got the silver wiring, so they've not spared uh, expense with the connector as well. They've thrown a Dean's connector on there, so a 7.4 LiPo stick straight into the stock tube will fit perfectly. Highly recommend like a 7.4 LiPo, it just um, sends the power better. Uh, please don't go up to the 11.1 with this. Uh, some manufacturers and some places will recommend this is okay for an 11.1. That's because this is coming is manufactured in a country that uh, allows higher power limits than us. So as soon as you go over that 350 FPS, that's when you can start touching on the 11.1. But our power limits under 350 FPS, I'd stick to that 7.4. You're not going to be disappointed with the um, rate of fire or anything. Uh, sorry, just came in. What uh, platform is this? This is the uh, Double Eagle M904E. The E stands for the configuration that it is. So there are many M904s. So the M904E is just the way that this one is put together. You can get ones with longer rails, shorter rails, sound hogs, suppressors, PDW stocks, uh, skeletonized stocks, uh, standard stocks like this, full stocks, absolutely anything you want. So if this, again, if this isn't your cup of tea, you can get something that uh, will suit your style. Cool uh, butterfly style charging handle as well. So let's talk about uh, what's inside this. So this has something that they uh, call the Falcon control system. So even in safe, the trigger will still move. That's because there's no um, 
physical contacts in there, it is all uh, MOSFET. Uh, Paul Eastwood, uh, are Dean's better connectors than Tamiya connectors? Long story short, yes. Many reasons why. Tamiya connectors are almost um, barbed, so when they are put into the connector, they are loose and can move around. Um, they're not quite as good at transferring the power as well. Um, Dean's connectors are spring-loaded. The actual um, plates themselves are spring-loaded. Once they're together, they hold themselves together, and the, the materials that they're made out of cause less resistance. So when you do connect them and your power is going through your uh, platform, it just means that you're not losing or wasting power by points of resistance down the line. Because obviously where the wires connect to the motor, where they connect to the battery, where they connect everywhere, that is a point of resistance. So if you have, if you limit the points of resistance, you're going to have more um, efficiency out of your battery. And Dean's connectors uh, provide a better efficiency. Uh, and they're just easier to put together. It's sometimes Tamiya's, the pins inside can move and bend. That doesn't happen with Dean's. They are just uh, all in all a little bit better. So the Falcon control system inside here, the um, the MOSFET, the computer, uh, how this thing operates. Um, so this thing's got loads and loads of different features all the way from um, you can set your burst. So out of the box, it's got safe, semi and full auto as standard. You can change your full auto into a burst mode and that can be anywhere from one to five rounds. So the reason why they've done a one round burst is so you can lock it to semi auto. So it will be semi and semi or you can have safe, semi, three round burst all the way up to five round burst. The cool thing about this as well, uh, if for whatever reason some places don't allow full auto and then some places do or they just want to restrict it in certain games, this thing does have a hard reset. So if you put into safe and pull the trigger, hold it for five seconds, it will factory reset it and it will go back to safe, semi and full auto. The thing that makes this really, really cool for CQB and um, sort of very fast outdoor play is it has what's called a binary trigger. Uh, some call it a bump trigger, anything like that. A bump trigger is more from a recoil causing it to happen, but uh, a binary trigger means that when you pull it, it fires. When you release it, it fires. So it will simply go fire, 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 fire. So it just means that that semi-auto is a little bit faster. You're not having to bounce it on a trigger, and with it being a, um, a non-contact style uh, trigger, it just means you're going to get plenty of uh, double taps downrange. Um this or the CM097 Platinum? Ooh, now that is a question. Um, I think overall, if I was to pick, I'd probably pick this. Um, purely because of that binary trigger. I've used it a couple of times. I do really like it. I think the MOSFET inside the Simer is probably slightly better with some of its features, but it doesn't have that binary trigger. That binary trigger makes this just... It just steps it a little bit beyond the Simer. Um... What is the trigger response? Uh, what's the trigger response like? Opinions. Um, with this being a MOSFET, the power delivery is instant. It is super fast. So the second you break that contact, it will put a round down range. And the fact that it's doing another one when you release the trigger, uh, it's not a case of the trigger response is very good. It's the fact that your double tap is way better than a standard, standard trigger. Um, so you're getting two for the price of one almost. And then even if you go to the burst fire, if you've got five or three round bursts just to limit um, ammo expenditure, you can keep it at that rather than going full auto all the time. Is this just uh, a different stock to the other one? Uh, so if you're on about the other 904s, yes. So anything that is a double eagle M904 is exactly the same as this. The only thing that's different is the um, letter afterwards just uh, denotes which model it is. So this being the E is a, sh a short rail and a CTR style stock. Uh, I think the G is really long with... Um, a PDW stock, there's loads of different ones, and but apart from that, this center bit is exactly the same on every single one. So the trigger's the same, the gearbox is the same, the connector's the same, the magazine's the same. Apart from that, the rail, the length of the, the inner barrel, and the stock is slightly different. Uh, another question off YouTube. Good looking rifle, poly or metal body receiver. So this thing is entirely polymer to keep it light. Uh, so the receiver's polymer, the rail is polymer, the stock, absolutely everything i think the um charging handle the charging handle and the um flash hider and the magazine are metal and i think the trigger as well is metal uh, apart from that this thing's super light it's down at uh, about two kilos which is almost nothing for an aeg it is really really good especially if you want to be really fast and aggressive with that binary trigger this is going to be really down uh, 
down that street it's going to be absolutely awesome and you're going to have a lot of fun with it um a couple of other really cool features is because you are going into the stock to get into the battery there is easy to pull pins so you pull this bit down there is a, a way to move the stock with that bit there but if you're trying to take it off pull that down slide it all the way off and it's very easy to get into the dean's connector if you already have or if you've already been into airsoft and this is something that you're interested in but you haven't got dean's batteries and you're currently running tammy or anything don't don't worry, in the box there is an adapter. There is a Deans to Tamiya adapter. Obviously, as I was saying earlier, you want to limit the points of resistance. Having an extra point of resistance is better than not being able to play at all. So it just allows you to connect the batteries that you have already uh, and make sure that you can run uh, as and when you need to. Uh, another question off YouTube. Is the Cinema Platinum uh, a programmable MOSFET? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it does have some programmable features, but it's more a protection system than anything else, whereas this is programmable, where it is the burst is programmable and the binary trigger is pro programmable uh, by being turned on and off, I mean. So as I was saying earlier, you've got safe, semi, and full auto out the box, but you can turn semi-auto into a binary trigger, which is fire, 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 fire. You're basically double tapping on a... Um, a trigger pull and a release and you can change full auto into anywhere from a single to a five round burst so that allows you to put uh, if you wanted to get one of the bigger ones and turn it into a dmr very very easy to turn it into semi semi uh, if for whatever reason it locks up you've still got the option to unlock it uh, un um, remove all the features reset it back to zero and set it all up again in case you're uh, running it slightly differently so if you were on semi pulled the trigger held it for five seconds it would return everything back to its factory settings uh, in case you'd lost where you were in because it's all down to uh, trigger pulls you've got to pull it hold it a few seconds release it press it a few times to get it uh, into the settings you want if for whatever reason you lose your way or you forget how many times you've pressed it Flick it into semi, into safe, pull it for five seconds, and just restart, and then you can go again. Uh, so another question off YouTube. What would you say is the best platform for the best prices? Completely varies, actually. Um, it's not really the best for a price. It's all down to your budget. Uh, I could quite easily tell you what the best one on the wall is, or what my favorite is, or what the best, um, what has the best range, what's got the best rate of fire, what's got the best this and that. At the end of the day, it has to be something you have to like the look of. Because um, I could tell you all the features of this, but if you don't like the look of it, you're not going to want to airsoft with it because you're just like, uh, So find something you like the look of. If for whatever reason there is a single part of it that you don't like, you can always change it out, whether or not it's the rail, the stock. Uh, play with it a few times and then think, oh, I want to increase, get my grouping a little bit better. You can then look at changing the barrel. But apart from that, something like this, Something like a G&G &G or something like the Simon Platinums are absolutely perfect for what you're uh, getting out of the box. They're absolutely awesome. This thing sits around 340 FPS out of the box with a binary trigger. That's just bonkers. It is really, really, really cool. Um, Dean's already, you're not having to do that little update. Uh, has the binary trigger, has a burst setting. It does have the adapter in case you already have Tamiya batteries, uh, but we do recommend a 7.4 volt LiPo with this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've covered an absolute ton there. Uh, I'll just do a very, very quick overview. If I have missed any questions, we'll try and uh, ask them again if necessary, and we'll flick them up. Uh, but yeah, so, as I've said, uh, 40 mil counterclockwise thread, if you want to throw suppressors, traces, anything like that on there. M-lock rail uh, on the left, right, and bottom with 20 mil on the top for your uh, pec boxes, optics, anything like that. This thing is full polymer. Uh, it is super stiff. It is super rigid. This thing isn't, um, I wouldn't, uh, deem this as less than uh, metal it is absolutely rock solid and it's going to bounce rather than break if you knocked it into anything uh, which is really really cool uh, fire controls it is ambidextrous and as i was saying before this has what's called the falcon control system in it so out the out the box safe semi full auto but you do have access to a binary trigger and burst settings binary trigger just means that it fires when you pull it and it fires when you release the trigger so you're getting double taps very very rapid uh, another question off YouTube. Is the Spectre Arms Daniel Defense Mark 18 any good? Yes, it is. It is very, very good. Um, a lot of the Dan uh, 
a lot of the Spectner arms, sorry, are coming with MOSFETs fit as well, whether or not it's the ASR, which is again a protection MOSFET for batteries and contacts or anything like that. Or if you're going into the edge system, uh, into the edge range, you're getting all the way up to a full-blown Aster, which has again loads and loads of settings. Just look at the tech description on the website and you'll see every little feature that them things have uh, and they're definitely really, really cool. The bronze one is absolutely stunning as well. Uh, so. Coming to the back end of this, this has the standard style stock on it. But again, as I was saying earlier, this is the M... Oh, nearly missed a question there. Uh, what uh, platform is that? An item number. Uh, so this is what we call the Double Eagle M904E. I was just going to say about this being... The E means it has this rail and this stock. If you want the M904G, E, F or anything like that, all that uh, last letter means is the makeup of uh, platform it is some have longer rails some have pdw stocks collapsing stocks skeletal stocks loads of different stuff like that but the actual center core and the heart of it is exactly the same on every single one um but yeah uh i think that is pretty much everything we've covered uh loads of really good questions there oh another one on youtube uh i would recommend playing with rentals before you get a rifle uh whatever you want to play with depends on the field uh, allows of course yes absolutely and that is very essential with a binary trigger as well because how rapid you're going to get rounds down with this some sites might say please turn it off but if you're in woodlands you're going to be fine cqb the binary trigger is is it almost too much uh, it's that good but it is excellent if you're outdoors in woodlands allows you to um conserve your ammo a little bit you're not having to burst uh full auto all the time but you've got the option if you need it uh, when I get my Yukara, uh, I will be able to take the blue two-tone of my gun uh, if it will be bronze still underneath. Uh, we don't recommend uh, undoing two-tone, uh, by all means. Uh, just have a look at uh, if you've had a two-tone one and you've used it for a while, just upgrade. Upgrade to something cool. Uh, but yeah, if that's everything for now, guys, this has been the Double Eagle M904. Uh, if we've missed your question, sorry, we will troll through any of the comments below. And if we find a question that we've not answered, we'll try and get a reply to you. But uh, it's great to speak to you as always. Uh, but uh, I will catch you again at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we'll see you for the um, brand video that we've got going on tomorrow. Loads and loads of toys hitting the, the video tomorrow. Until then, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.